grace of God will be looking at the benefits of praying in tongues. Benefits of praying in tongues. You see, we notice from the scriptures that the gift of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the infilling of the Holy Ghost came with the gift of speaking in tongues. Which was one of the amazing deposits of God into our lives. Because everywhere that they, in the scripture that they received the Holy Spirit, one of the evidence is that they spoke in tongues. So that makes me to understand that the coming of the Holy Ghost or the indwelling of the Spirit of God in us has something connected with praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Because everyone that received the Holy Spirit in the scripture, they all spoke in tongues. That means once the Holy Spirit come, he gives that divine utterance and people began to speak. So that makes me to believe there is a connection between the Holy Ghost and that gift of speaking in tongues. Because you can't speak in tongues without having the Holy Ghost. And when he comes, then he gives you that gift. So there is something about his living in you and that speaking in tongues. So that is what we want to look at. What is the correlation? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, Apostle Paul was thanking God there. He said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. More than you all. He was letting the church to know that he prays and speaks in tongues a lot because there are a tremendous benefits in praying in tongues. There are tremendous benefits. You will see the orthodox people, they argue, oh, you don't have to speak in tongues, you don't have to pray in tongues, and all kinds of that. That is not my emphasis. If you read all that in uh, starting from chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number, that is not where I'm going. I've seen some people come, oh, why you don't have to pray in tongues? You don't have to know. That is not. Apostle Paul, if you know who Apostle Paul is, he said, I'm thanking God, I'm giving glory to God that I speak in tongues more than you all. More than you all. I speak, I pray in tongues more than you all. So that could mean that part of what exempted him from other disciples might be that his ability to pray a lot in tongues. So he was letting the church know there are benefits, tremendous benefits. That is why I speak more than every one of you. And that is why I have become what I have become, standing out. So we want to look at some of these benefits. So don't mind the people that argue with you and tell you, oh, oh, don't speak in tongues, all oh, that. No, if they receive the Holy Ghost exactly and they don't want to speak, that is their business. But I want to bring out some benefits why you as a believer who has received the Holy Ghost needs to thunder in tongues a lot and always. Praise the Lord. Number one is that it builds you up. It builds you up. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 4. When you pray in tongues, it builds you up. You are building up yourself. He said, he who speaks in tongues edifies himself. He who speaks in tongues edifies himself. That word edify came from the word edifice. Edifice means to build. It's an architectural word, means to build. So the person that prays in tongues builds up himself. Just as you go to gym to build up your body, you pray in tongues to build up your spirit. He that prays, speaks in tongues, edifies himself. So, it is yourself, 
you build up yourself by praying in tongues, by speaking in tongues. You are building up yourself. And what are you building up? Not your body, but your spirit. Praise the Lord. The more you pray in the spirit, the more spiritual stamina that you build. The more you pray in spirit, the more the spiritual stamina that you are building. Oh, I remember one time I gave you a challenge. I said if you want your spiritual senses to be very sensitive, speak in tongues. Pray in tongues. And if you want your eyes to open, you want to begin to see vision, you want to sleep and have dreams, visions of the night, pray in tongues at least 20 minutes, 30 minutes before you go to bed. Because these are benefits. You build up your spirit by praying in the Holy Ghost. So if you are going to be a strong and a vibrant Christian, you have to spend quality time praying in the Holy Ghost. If you want to be a vibrant Christian, a strong believer, you have to spend quality time praying in the Holy Ghost. He that prays, that speaks in tongues, edifies, builds up himself. So the reason why most of us are not built up is because we don't pray in the Holy Ghost. That's why I tell you, for the fact that you have the gifts, don't bottle it up. No. There is something it has to do with the spirit that you have received. It's a mechanism of servicing the presence, of building the presence of that spirit that is already in you. You build up the spirit by praying in tongues. Just like the man who goes to work out in the gym. He's building up his body, building up his muscles. When you are praying in the spirit, you are building up your spirit. You can't be a vibrant Christian, a powerful, a strong Christian, if you don't spend quality time, quality time praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. But you, beloved, Building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, let's go to the Amplified Classic. He said, but you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded your most holy faith, make progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Build up yourselves. Make progress. So spiritual progress. Spiritual maturity. Building comes from praying in the Holy Ghost. Rise like an edifice. A building that is being built up. He said, how do you rise? In the spirit, he said, by praying in the Holy Ghost. Number two, it facilitates speedy answers to your prayers. It facilitates speedy answers to your prayers. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man. You, you bypass man. You bypass man. You are not speaking to men. You are speaking to God. Somebody has once asked me, why do you speak in tongues when nobody can hear what you're saying? I'm 
not speaking to you. You don't have to hear what I'm saying. Because I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to God. God, who is a spirit, understands what I'm saying. What is your business? Are you getting what I'm saying? Because some people will bring all kinds of theology. They want to suppress you. They want to make you not to observe what you are supposed to do. He said, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. So to bypass the protocols of men. Now, for instance, the president of this country, Joe Biden, he has many telephone lines that are linked to his offices. To his office, right? All his, all his aides have lines, presidential lines. So it's not every phone call that he answers direct, right? But you know the wife, Jill Biden? If Jill wants to call the president, she doesn't have to pass through the aides. There is a line that she will call and the president himself will answer. Right? Do you believe me? If you want to die the presidential number now, believe you me, it's not Joe Biden that will pick it. Somebody else will pick it. But if the wife wants to call, it's, that, it's not that same number that the wife will call. There is a line that we call, the man will answer himself and say, Jill, how are you? What is it? What is going on? Speaking in tongues is God's hotline. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you bypass the angels. You bypass the aids. You bypass protocols. You get to God direct. That is what 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 is telling us. He that speaks in a tongue does not speak to man, but to God. How be it in the realm of the spirit, which is the realm of God, what that person is speaking is mysteries. And God understands mysteries. So if you want to reach God directly, you want to bypass protocol. The direct line to God is praying in tongues. That is his direct line. That is his hotline. Praying in your understanding is one level. Praying in tongues is on another level. A man of God said that when you pray in your understanding, that your prayer travels at the speed of sound. But when you pray in tongues, it travels at the speed of light. Light travels faster than sound. So God's direct line. Number three, what do I stand to gain when I spend time to pray in the Holy Ghost? Praying in tongue is a secret of generating power. It's a secret of generating power. When you got baptized in the Holy Ghost, what God did was that God deposited a power generating set that can generate millions of megawatts and dropped into your spirit. When you got baptized with the Holy Ghost, what God did, he brought a generator, a generating set and dropped and that generating set can generate millions of megawatts. Depends on how you run it. So that's what God did. In James chapter 
5 verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. Let me go direct to the Amplify Classic. He said, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tune of mind and heart. He said, the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. It makes, it generates power. So your prayer, your earnest heartfelt prayer generates power. It makes tremendous power available on the scene and that power is dynamic. In his walking. The heartfelt. Earnest. Prayer of a righteous man. Brings power. To bear. On the issues of life. On issues of life. It brings power. It generates power. It generates power. So your prayer. Makes tremendous power available. Makes tremendous power available. Just like last week I had a brother, one of our brother here called me. And said uh, they noticed something in their house. That their daughter doesn't want to sleep in her room again. For a couple of months. If you just enter the room with her and you leave her. Even for one second, she will run out and follow you. And their little baby, the one they just gave birth to, will just all of a sudden scream in the midst of the night and be crying uncontrollably. I said, okay, let's pray. We prayed. We prayed. And what we did was declaration. We issued a decree because it's a spiritual thing. There is an evil presence there. And she called me, called me the following day. He said for the first time that their daughter slept in her house. Even when he had gone for work, called around 9.30, the wife said that she's still sleeping in her room all by herself. And the first time their baby slept well without disturbance. Now, what happens was that power was what was generated on the place of prayer. He said the prayer, the earnest heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. And that power is dynamic. So when the Holy Ghost came, when you were baptized with the Holy Ghost, what God did is that he brought a generator. You know what generator does? You know, we don't use generator here because we have constant power. But if you go to Nigeria, uh, where the power fluctuates, you need something to generate your own power because government doesn't have adequate megawatts to give you power all the time. So you have a generator. So even if you don't have money, you buy, I pass my neighbor. There is the smallest one they, they call I pass my neighbor. You get it. What do you, when the power goes, you use it to generate power and supply to your house. So, God brought a generator set and dropped in your spirit person when the Holy Ghost came. So, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, what you are doing is that you are generating power. You are making tremendous power available. You are producing power that is dynamic in its working. That you can use to run your fridge, run your things, run your cooker, run everything that needs voltage in your house. That is what happens when you begin to pray in tongues. You are generating power 
you are making power available to solve issues of life. A prayerless Christian will be a powerless Christian. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. A prayerful Christian is a powerful Christian. This was the secret of Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us that long before it is done, it said that Jesus will depart, go into a solitary place and pray. He separates himself. He goes to generate power. That is why when he's returning, demons possessed will see him and get delivered. The woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of her, her, his garment. The issue ceased. Because Jesus has gone to generate power by prayer early in the morning while his disciples are still sleeping. The Bible says he will sneak away in a very solitary place. He goes, that was his secret. So when he's walking on the way, powers are dropping. People's needs are being solved. Needs. People's needs have been met. The woman with the issue of blood, they have no appointment. But because he had generated power, enough power, as he was moving, the woman touched only the clothes and her problem was solved. So when you pray, you generate power. You make tremendous power available on the scene. And that power is dynamic in its working because it can be used to do anything that you think. Number four. It activates the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It activates the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Praying in tongue activates the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It opens up your spiritual eyes. Last time I gave that assignment, how many people did it? I don't know. How many people began to pray? I said just practice for like two weeks. Eh? If you are the one that used to have dream where dogs are pursuing you, all these kinds of things, <laughs> you, you know, no, what you will not have will be revelation. You start having revelation. Because what it does is sanctifies your channels of reception from heaven. So, so when you begin to pray in tongues, it activates your sense of wisdom. It activates your spiritual senses. The spirit of wisdom and revelation comes alive in your being. It opens your spiritual eyes. If you're going to receive revelations from God, the answer is going to be speaking in tongues. If you're going to be receiving revelation, revelations from God. You see, the Holy Ghost... The one that is seated inside of you. The one that is occupying your being. The one that you are housing is the spirit of revelation. It is from him that revelation comes. He wants your spiritual eyes to be opened. You need to be. You want to receive revelations from God. For God to begin to show you something. The answer, the secret is to be speaking, praying in tongues. Are you getting what I'm saying? The secret is to be praying in tongues. Now, in Mark chapter 4, verse 11, he said, he said to them, to you, it has been given to you, to the believers. It has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things are done, all things come in parable. But to you, a believer, it has been given to you. That means it is your heritage. It is your birthright to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But remember where we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. He said that the man who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but to God. But how be it in the spirit? What does he speak? 
mysteries. And then he says in Mark, he said, it is given to you to know the mysteries, the mystery of the kingdom. Until you speak mystery, you cannot understand mystery. Are you getting what I'm saying? Until you speak mystery, you cannot understand mystery. Now, you can't understand a language you don't know. You can't understand a language you don't speak. But to you, as a believer, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. Then in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, he said the man who is praying in tongue is speaking mystery in the spirit. He's speaking to God and he's speaking mystery in the spirit. If you don't speak mystery, you cannot understand mystery. The Bible is a mystery book. It is not an open book for you to really understand the scriptures. It needs to be opened up to you. You have to pray in the spirit to unveil the mysteries of the word of God. The Bible is not an open book. It's a mystery book. And for you to tap the mysteries from there, you have to pray in tongues to unveil Unveil the mystery. Mysteries are hidden things. They are things beyond human understanding. You need the help of God to understand. That is what the scripture is. Without the help of the Holy Ghost, you cannot interpret the scriptures accurately. You cannot. You cannot understand the scriptures very well without the Holy Spirit. You cannot. Because the word of God is mystery. So, speak, when you begin to speak, to pray in tongues, it takes away the veil from your eyes. And you're able to obtain the mysteries that are in the world. It takes away the veil. It tears off the veil. Your eyes open. When you read scriptures, you're able to draw mysteries from there. It opens up your eyes to revelation. Then you pray in the Holy Ghost. The veil that covers the word. Because the word of God is a mystery book. It's a mystery book. But the Bible says to us that are believers, it is given to us. It's our right to know the mystery. And then he said that when you are speaking in tongues, you are speaking mystery. So you speak mystery to understand mystery. So when you are praying in tongues, your, the veils open. Your eyes is open to catch revelations that will bring revolutions in your life. Revelation is what brings revolutions in your life. Number five. It is spiritual digestion. Praying in tongues helps you to digest knowledge. It is spiritual digestion. Just like your digestive system, it helps you to break down food particles into absorbable sizes. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you eat food, you eat a bowl of pande, bowl of pande, the yam with a goosey soup, and all the bomo and everything inside. Your digestive system sets, goes into work. They begin to break down the things so that your body can absorb it. So when you are praying in the Holy Ghost, it helps you to absorb knowledge. Are you getting what I'm saying? It breaks down knowledge to absorbable form, to understandable level for you. That is why whenever, whatever you find it difficult to understand or you're reading the Bible, you find it difficult to comprehend. Pause. Pray in the spirit for two minutes. Get back. You see, boom. You assimilate. You understand. Your understanding opens up. 
The understanding opens up. So it helps to digest knowledge. Just the same way your digestive system works, that is the same way it breaks down spiritual truth from the word of God to your understanding. Like now I'm preaching now. With my explanation and everything, some of you are getting it clearer. The same scripture, maybe you have read this scripture before, but now as I'm teaching now, you are, you are, you are being able, you are correlating the, the truth of the word of God. You can understand it. So that is what the whole this praying in tongue does. It helps you to digest the truth, spiritual truth. It's, it helps you understand it. You see, the Bible talks about the believers having two minds. You have your mind, then you have the mind of Christ. He said, we have the mind of The mind of Christ is a spiritual mind. He said, our mind, number one mind, is the mind of ourselves. It's limited in its capacity. But the mind of Christ is a spiritual, is a mind that can understand everything. And you have it. He said, we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is not a limited mind in his understanding, in his capacity. So you have your mind as a man, then you have the mind of Christ also. So you have the capacity to understand anything as a believer. And that is coming from the place of the Holy Ghost. You understand mysteries. It is given to you to know mysteries. How do you know mysteries? How does a mortal man know? It's the mind of Christ that is in you. Through which you digest mysteries. The, 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 the mind of Christ is superior to the human mind. Your spiritual mind can understand anything. All things. And is superior to your natural mind. Superior. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. He said, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. You have an anointing from the Holy One. And that anointing makes you to know all things. In verse 27. He said, but the anointing which you have received from him, talking about the Holy Ghost, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and it is not a lie and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So the anointing breaks down all truth, all knowledge, be it secular, be it scientific, be it spiritual. The anointing has the capacity to break down knowledge for you to understand. So the anointing which you receive teaches you all things. Say so you don't need anyone to teach you, but there is anointing. That is the Holy Ghost. So it helps you in the assimilation of knowledge. It can be scientific. It can be secular knowledge. It can be spiritual knowledge. Whatever knowledge. Biblical knowledge. It helps you. It gives you understanding. So as a Christian, there is nothing that you cannot understand. Because you have the mind of Christ. That's why Smith Wigglesworth Wiggles says, he said, I read the Bible in the Holy Ghost. He said, I read the Bible in the Holy Ghost. I read the Bible. He was a great man of God, highly revelated. He said, I read the Bible in the Holy Ghost. Smith, I read the Bible in the Holy Ghost. Number six. It unlocks divine intelligence. It unlocks divine intelligence. It unlocks it. Every believer is carrying the seven spirits of God. 
inside his spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Every believer is carrying the seven spirits of God inside his spirit. Now, because it's the same Holy Ghost. You didn't receive quarter of the spirit, no. Or half of the Holy Spirit, no. You receive the full Holy Ghost. You receive that Holy Ghost. They didn't cut it into half to give you or into a quarter. No. You receive the full Holy Ghost. So every believer has the seven, the seven spirits of God inside of him or her. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2. He said, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, which is the Holy Ghost that you have been baptized into. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Then what will be the effect? He said, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Two, the spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. All this shall rest upon the person. So every believer has the seven spirits of the Lord dwelling inside his spirit being. Are you getting what I'm saying? So these candles are inside your spirit and are lighted. And they are unlocked by praying in tongues. They are unlocked by praying in tongues. When he talks about the spirit of knowledge, knowledge here means what? Supernatural knowledge. Supernatural understanding. Supernatural wisdom. Supernatural beyond the natural. That is what the Holy Ghost brings into a believer. Beyond the natural. The word supernatural means above. Superior to the natural. It is superior. Supernatural. Superior to the natural. That means you have wisdom superior to the natural wisdom. You have wisdom that is superior to the natural wisdom. That is what supernatural wisdom. Supernatural understanding. Supernatural knowledge. The spirit of might. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of counsel. Counsel. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of knowledge. They are talking about supernatural dimensions. In Job chapter 32 verse 8. Job 32 verse 8. He said, but there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the almighty giveth them understanding. So the spirit in man needs to be inspired. It needs to be activated. And how you activate it is by praying in the Holy Ghost. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So that spirit needs to be inspired. It needs to be activated. How do you activate that spirit in man? By praying in the spirit, you activate the seven spirits of God and it gives you divine intelligence. Divine intelligence. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 5. He says, counsel in the heart of man is deep water. Mm. But, it's, but a man of understanding will draw it out. He will draw it out. So what the Bible is saying is that there are solutions, ideas, innovations, concepts that are lying deep inside you. You need something to draw it up. Like a well, deep inside of you. It's like a well that is very deep inside. You need a well drawer. To be able to draw it to the surface. Praying in tongues is like a well drawer. Do you, some of you, you know, you are born in town. Some of we are born in the village where there are no boreholes then. We all have this well. You go and you throw something. 
inside the well and draw and draw so what the bible is telling us there is that there is a deep well of ideas innovations concepts that are deep right deep inside of you you need a well drawer to draw them from the deep are you getting what i'm saying so you throw in so that well drawer is the praying in the holy ghost are you getting what i'm saying so when you throw the well drawer you you reach the deep so the spirit of god has come to sit inside of you and inside you so is the depth of knowledge ideas concept that is why when you draw oh my god you see people if you if you pray if you adopt what I'm telling you, you will notice that your reasoning is, is higher than other people. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because you draw. You draw. You draw. When I was in school, I wasn't as spiritual as I am today now. Eh? But people used to come to me for advice. People used to all kinds of advice. You have a problem, you come to me. I will add, and I will, add, I will give you a, a therapy and tell you, do this thing this way. Even if you have a problem with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, you will just come and narrate the story. I will tell you what to do. It was as that. So people come to seek wisdom. Wisdom from my mouth. I will tell them, you see this thing? Do this thing, do this, do this. And they will do it, it will work. They will come back again. You see, the, the, the knowledge, there is something that is deeply rooted. Now, let's take that scripture again. He said, there is a spirit in a proverb. He said, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. Is deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. The Bible is saying, inside of you are ideas, solutions, concepts. That are hidden deep inside. So you need a well drawer to pull it out. To draw it. If there are some of you who have used well. You know what I am saying. You understand? You throw that bag with a rope. Long rope. Because the well is deep. You throw it there. It went in your tower in water. And then you allow it to sink. Then you pull it out. Now, that is how cancer. Solutions of what you are passing through now. Is inside of you. Ideas of what to do to come out of poverty is inside of you. Concepts are inside of you. But you need to draw them. They are deep. He said they are deep. Counsel in the heart of is deep inside. So you need to draw them. How do you draw them? You need a well drawer to pull it out. What is that? Is praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. That deep well is the Holy Ghost. That is seated inside of you. He has solution because he knows all things. He has every solution that you need. But you can't do It's deep inside of the heart. So you need to draw it out. You need to draw it out. So my friends, take time to pray in that spirit. Take time. My children don't go to school until they pray for 20 minutes every day. Till Christ comes. You, you know, it's part of our routine prayer. In the morning, you, you pray in tongues for 20 minutes. After we read the long sermon, read the Bible, you pray. You speak in tongues. That is where safety is. Practice it. Set out time to pray in tongues. Start, even if it's 10 minutes, start. Every day, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues every day. You want to get revelation? Pray in tongues before you sleep. Pray in tongues. It's not dream. Of uh, Kankaru and uh, they are pursuing you. No, what you get is revelation. God will tell you this is what to do, this is what is trying to happen here and there. Call this person, tell him this, warn this person, and all that. And that is it. Deep right inside, you draw it by praying in the Holy Ghost. There are many things in your spirit. There are many things that your spirit knows that your mind, your mind does not know. 
The spirit knows them, but your mind does not know them. Bishop Edebo said one day he went to visit his friends. He didn't know that they had packed out from where they were staying. Ah, he said he got there. Now what is happening? Ah, these people have packed out. The Holy Spirit said, oh yeah, I know where they are. Turn right. He will turn right. He will go, 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 go. He will say turn left. He will turn left. He will go, go, go. He will say turn right. Ah, he said he got to a certain... Ah, he said, Holy Ghost, people can't live inside here. Here is bush. The Holy Ghost said, be going if you want to see them. He said he continued going. He never knew that they built a new house inside there. And then when he got there, ah, he now saw the guy's clothes hanging outside on the rope there. Ah, he knocked on the door. The guy shouted, Brother David, how did you find us? How, how did you find us? Who told you we are here? He said the Holy Ghost. There are many things that your spirit knows which your mind doesn't know. You can assess them. I had this testimony from a man of God. One day he boarded an aircraft. They were mid-air. You know that when aircraft goes, gets to mid-air, the pilot can go and sleep. He enters autopilot. He said they, they don't know what happened. The pilot and the co-pilot, they came out of the Copied and the door locked. They came out because it's their free time to move around because the airplane is on autopilot and the door locked. Ah, uh -uh. he said he was sitting in first class. He noticed they were like there was agitation. They were like everybody's look was like ah, uh -uh. they were you know trying to figure out what to do and all that. He said he just called him. Excuse me. Say what is going on. He said the, the, the cockpit is locked and nobody's inside. He said, he said that the, the number they don't know is inside. He just, just heard the door blast in tongue for like two minutes and the number popped up. He told them put 9560257 and then they did it, the thing opened. They said, who are you? <laughs> There are many things that your spirit knows. Your mind doesn't know it. Let's rise to our feet. I will finish this message on Wednesday to give you, I still have six more benefits of praying in tongues to give you. So for you to understand why you need to pray in the spirit. Don't listen to any theology people are telling you. Practice it and see. Then nobody can deceive you any further. Benefits is given for your benefits. He said it is given for us to understand, to know the mysteries. You see, this life is mystery. It's mysteries. There are mysteries about life. But as a believer, he said this is given to you. To know mystery is your heritage. It's your heritage to understand mystery. It's your heritage to understand parable. But the them that are without... It is parable. It is parable. But you have access. Ask God, give me grace to be a person that will devote time praying in the Holy Ghost. To be a person that will devote time praying in the Holy Ghost. To be a person that will devote time praying in the Holy Ghost. Ask God for grace. To give yourself into praying. He that prayed in unknown tongues, say, he defies himself. You need to build up yourself. You need to build up yourself. Build up yourself. Build up yourself. That is the mystery. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. He said, the person speaketh, how be it in the spirit? You are speaking mystery. You need to speak mystery for you to understand mysteries. You need to speak mysteries for you to understand mysteries. If you don't speak mystery, if you don't upload mysteries to heaven, there is no mystery that you would download. If you don't upload mystery to heaven, you don't have mystery to download. It's garbage in, garbage out. If you upload mystery, you download mystery. How be it? The person is not speaking unto me. I'm not speaking in tongues for you to understand. 
I'm speaking directly to God. I'm communicating with God, the father of all spirits, who understands the mysteries. Be a man and a woman of mysteries. Walk in the mystery of the kingdom because it is given to you to know. How do you come about revelation? It's by mystery. It's mystery. It's mystery. It's mystery. How do you wake up in the morning and know that you are going to have an accident and then something makes, tells you to sit down? Don't go out. It's mystery. It's mystery. You come across revelation by mystery. This mystery I'm telling you. You need to build up. You need to build up. How do you just come and say that devil is planning to kill somebody? It's mystery. It's mis I'm telling, showing you the way to that mystery. It's mystery. And it's given to you to know the mystery of the kingdom. To them that are without, without God, without Jesus, without the Holy Ghost, it is a parable. Something they can't understand. But you can understand mysteries. You can understand mysteries. There are deep solutions. There are deep ideas. There are deep concepts inside of you. You need to draw them out. The generator state is already with you. You need to power it. He said it makes tremendous power. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost in the next two minutes. Begin to blast in tongue. Begin to build yourself. Ratu zeli barata lakete. Lato se 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 li parata. La kuta lima balaze se le ke telia. La tele se susi li parate re kotolia. La zu zo zi se le ma balatu se ke te. La kuta la balake telia. La za ze 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 le balata. Ri ga 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 da. E re ka katala borozizi. Ri barazia. Re paru tele ke tele katala balazizi. Amaru se le pale. E re te ke tele ke tele balazozia. Ma razu se le ke te. This thing works, oh. This thing works. This thing works. I heard something now as I was praying. I heard something now as I was praying. Give us, somebody here is going to get a good news. Yeah. Now, bring uh, Proverbs 25, 25. That's what I heard now. Yeah. Proverbs 25, 25. Let's find out what it is. Joshua, give us Proverbs 25, verse 25. He said, as cold water... Is to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. I don't know who you are. Maybe you are weary, but God has asked me to tell you now that good news is coming. I said that good news is coming. I said that good news is coming. I said that good news is coming. 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 It is yours. It is yours. It is yours. In the name of Jesus. Please, this thing works. So, this thing, if it doesn't work, I will tell you it doesn't work. It works. It works. Build up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You can hear God better. You can hear God clearer. If you can only obey what I'm telling you today. We'll continue this message on Wednesday, part two of it. I have six more points to give you. The benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost. Don't listen to any theological jargon. People will tell you, oh no, you need to have an interpreter for you to pray. That is only when you want to prophesy in tongue. So that people can understand what, that's when you need interpreter. But to pray to your father, the father of all spirits, who understands all mystery. And somebody tells you, you need to interpret to you, to God. You don't need that. You are praying in the Holy Ghost. God understands it. He says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue does not speak to men, but unto God. How be it? In the spirit, it is mystery. Be a mysterious man. Be a mysterious woman. For it is already given for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. God bless you.